clip actually. So this is the recent episode of the Fire and the Kid, where Brendan kind of addresses and doesn't address the Euro UK tour cancellation. And the body language on this episode is really interesting because for one, the body language to me tells tells me, sorry, that these guys are over this pod. We all know this, myself included, being a former fan. I stopped listening many, many years ago. But I think even if you are a fan or even if you are somebody that's, you know, classifies, classifies yourself as a hater, you will definitely see these guys' body language and just the way that they speak to each other on the show and the fucking inf- lack of enthusiasm dripping from every fucking orifice on their body that clearly they don't want to be there and they're just doing it for the money. They're basically treating this job like a nine to five. They clock in and clock out. They do the bare minimum and keep it going. But because it's the one kind of shiny toy, or no, it's the one kind of, um, you know, uh, it's the one big draw within the kind of, T Fat K firing the kid. No, it's a, it's a one over. It's a one. It's the most successful thing. Sorry, under the Thick Boy Productions banner, it makes sense why they're hanging on for dear life because I'd imagine this pod pays a large part of their overall fucking salaries. You know what I mean? I get that regard. What's this massive thing coming on screen? Oh, big up you, Super Chat. Things gonna come through in a minute. Um, so I understand why they're so flipping attached to it and aren't gonna let go of it. But part of me also thinks if you're a fan of the show, seeing them like this, Brian, Brian's arms crossed, Brendan slouched in the chair, arms crossed. Yo, big up Patrick Taylor, appreciate the super chat with nothing on there but just a hippo. <laughs> big up Patrick Taylor, no message, but just a funny information, Mark. I appreciate the, the 1999 super chat. That fucking gif is fucking hilarious. But I thank you and I appreciate you. But I'm saying that like, in this fucking pose, right, I honestly do think, like, at some point, you just got to say, you know what, is it worth the, if the, is the juice worth the squeeze? And this is why I kind of appreciate Joey Diaz. I mentioned it previously on my last episode of the live stream, that how Unique covered, um, that recently Joey Diaz mentioned that he's basically cancelling and finishing his fucking show and not doing his podcast anymore, Uncle Joey's Joint. And I mentioned how kind of, you know, how pissed i was and upset i was because i'm a fan of joey diaz to see him end it but i also kind of respected the fact that he did decide to just kind of bow you know gracefully bow out and be like hey the podcast bubble has burst it's not what it once was the show isn't as fun anymore now lee sayat isn't doing it with me anymore and i moved to another place in the country and i'm now a family man i've got different objectives and priorities maybe the whole beef with red bar affected joey diaz's decision but You have to respect the fact that Joey Diaz has made the decision on his own, on his own to step away and not constantly keep chasing the flame, not constantly keep chasing the dragon or hanging on for dear life. He decided himself. I think it's somewhat admirable. It's somewhat something quite, you know, to be like, you know what, respect. Whereas these guys are just still clocking and clocking. We're still clocking into this fucking dying pod that clearly has gone, you know, has seen better days just because it makes some money. But the quality of the show is fucking terrible. So who is entertaining? I don't really know. But the body language is fucking interesting. Like this is just, they're so over it, really over it. But the funniest part about it is how Brendan mentions the shows and stuff. And, the you know, the end of the show where they plug their dates. <laughs> He's clearly somewhat defeated but again, just explaining it and kind of speaking about it openly, nah, let's just kind of pretend like everything's cool and we're going to spend some of the kiddo. So this is kind of his explanation as to why the UK tour has been cancelled at the end of the recent episode of T5K. They're fast. Oh, they're fast. We they're can fast. set that up. That's fast. Is that a chin? That's it. All right, I'll be with Brian Tuesday night. Where are we going to be, B? Venice? Uh, Venice West in Venice, California. You, me, right Lincoln Tripoli, Boulevard. Eddie me, Bravo, Eddie Jeff Bravo, Dye. Yeah, Eddie Bravo, Sam Tripoli, Jeff Dye, Brendan Schreiber. be a fun time. Maybe a special guest. Um, next, I'll be doing sets around L.A. We have a fight command this Saturday, 7 p.m. live on Think Boy YouTube for UFC 289. The Schmo, Callen, and... Take a long break, bud. Polly Shore. Shore. Take a long break. Yes, I'm chilling nice. this summer with the kiddos. Nice. I love how <laughs> that's 
<laughs> that exchange was amazing. There's so many bits of breakdown. Number one, the big special guest for fucking this fight companion is fucking Brian Callen, which is, you know, big guest, whatever. But still, to be fair, I've always been a person that said, I don't understand why Brian doesn't do the fight companion more often. The fight companion that Joe Brendan does now is pales in comparison to the heady days of what the fight companion was when Rogan used to do it. But the magic of that fight companion on JRE was that it was a set group of guys who were all friends, right? Eddie Bravo, Joe Rogan, Brian Callen, Brendan Shaw. At the time, were all close friends. They all got along. They were happy to see each other during the fight cards, shoot the shit. And most of the times, you'd watch that stream because they weren't paying attention to the actual fight cards. It's actually funnier to hear them speak, get fucked up, get drunk, get high, and enjoy each other's company. But when Brendan did it, his Calabasas fight club, and he started having rotating guests of all these freaks and weirdos and stuff who didn't know each other, it just wasn't the same thing. It wasn't the same vibe. And clearly... Um, just wasn't a fun show to watch. But I think the show could work if you just have a set group of people. You just maybe even having Brian and Sam Tripoli, whoever it may be, just a set group of maybe three people and then rotating a guest. But having it be four different people that don't know each other is bizarre. So the fact that Brian's on the fight companion, kind of as fight companion, is actually a good thing. So no problem with that one. The funny thing about this is the end bit where Brian kind of says in a concerning voice, Papa. You don't have many shows. Like, you got a big gap. Like, you've, you're performing in July. Then the only other show after that is September. Then it's November. Like, that's, cons like, what's happening, man? You should be performing all the time. Every day, all the time. Every day, all the time. And then Brendan pretends not to hear it. And then, then he answers. <laughs> that he, he's decided to not get booked, not get paid not be away from the family on the road securing addies and baddies but instead he wants to be at home now and be a family man allegedly so i find that exchange hilarious i'm going to replay that again that exchange is the best part for me let's go here but we've got a big break <laughs> it's around la we have a fight command this saturday 7 p.m live on thick boy youtube for ufc 289 the schmo callen and taking a long break bub Paul, Polly Paul shore, shore. Right. taking a long break Yes, I'm chilling nice. this summer with the kiddos. Nice. <laughs> you see what I mean? These comedians, like, Brian Callen is like, he looks like a fucking crepe keeper. Like, that's fucking Skeletor. He is looking old. He's looking tired and weathered. He's actually trying to show his age now. I know it's a very pixelated image, but he looks like an old man, this. This guy doesn't look in his 40s. He looks like every bit of 60, right? He's got that massive fucking, those coke nostrils there just hanging all over there. Like, he looks like he's been through it. But he's had a very successful career. He's done loads of amazing things in his career. But he doesn't even, there's not even a hint of him stopping, pausing, taking a break. It's just going, content, more content, more content, more stand-up, more stand-up. There's no hint of like, hey, let me just relax. Let me take my foot off the pedal here. Spend some time with the family here. He's got a newborn, and he's got a newborn baby. And he's surprised and shocked when he sees that his friend, his co-host, his brother has a massive gap in his schedule. Like, brother, like, you should be performing. You should be performing. Like, what's going on? Why are you performing? <laughs> and then Brendan has to lie and say, yeah, spend time with the family. The family? The one that you hate? Come on, Bubba. Okay, one more time. Brendan, should be a fun time. Maybe a special guest. Um, next, I'll be doing sets around LA. We have a fight command this Saturday, 7 p.m. live on Thick Boy YouTube for UFC 289. The Schmo, Callen, and taking a long break, bud. Polly Paul Shore. Shore taking a long break. <laughs> this is the he's like he looks a bit murderous here. You're taking a long break. You're taking a long break. He's like, say it one more time, and I'm gonna fucking kill you. You're taking a long break. <sighs> he's preparing a C clamp. He's preparing the fucking von flu choke like he's preparing something in his brain <laughs> he's not <laughs> yes i'm chilling nice. this summer with the kiddos nice so uh, i'm chilling this summer with the kiddos yeah sure buddy but yeah uh, an amazing an amazing update an amazing fucking situation to see and then obviously brian immediately cucks and says nice but the face is like shit i wouldn't be could it be me I'm on the road until I fucking die, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, could it be me, mate? I'm still out there fucking working. 
I'd be fucking horrified. But maybe a lot of that has to do with their fucking monthly expenses, isn't it? To be fair to them. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'd imagine LA monthly expenses are fucking brutal. So they probably can't afford to not be on the road. But I find the the fucking surprise and shock from Brian that he's got a gap in his schedule and that he's actually going to spend time at home is like really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and says everything about these guys' careers and stuff. I find that bizarre. I, I just find it also interesting people that just keep aggressively <laughs> down in this fucking <laughs> dislike in the shows. It's quite funny. Like these things have been disabled. I only can see it because I've got the plug in on my thing. But most people can't see you disliking videos anyway. But I find it funny there's still a group of people out there that still like, go out their way to dislike <laughs> episodes of the Fire Kid. <laughs> <laughs> honestly some people are fucking mean it just won't leave them alone they're just still gonna just like smash the dislike just to kind of keep it honest it's fucking brutal but yeah um you know spending summer time with the kiddos that's why we're not getting a london show that's why all these shows are cancelled spending summer time with the fucking kiddos that's why all these four shows are cancelled originally it was six now it's four because he wants to spend summer with the kiddos, allegedly, right? Allegedly, spending time with the fucking kiddos. I fucking love it, man. The kiddos' excuse is fucking one of the most brilliant excuses I've heard in the history of mankind.